akati. A katitiro noa hau ki runga, katitiro noa hau ki raro, katitiro noa hau ki wainga nui ye. Hei whea ke rā hei oranga mo taku Māori tanga kei tēnei tuku rā nei, kei tērā tuku rā nei. Kei te kora hanoa pē pore pore mai ana, a kuni ka riro, te ihi, te wehi, te tapu, te mana. O ki atu ki te whenua, o ki atu ki te pū, ati hei Māori ora. Kei ngā maunga whakahei a tēnā hapu, a tēnā hapu. Ngā wa whakatere tanifa, ngā whare kari oi, ngā whare kōrero, Ngā whare tapere ko tai mai nei, tēnei poiru nei te karanga, nau mai, tauti mai, whakatau mai nei ki tēnei hui huinga, kara pine pine mai ki tēnei kaupapa, ai karanga atu nei ki a koutou i runga i te auha tanga o tēnei wā, nau mai, haere mai, whakatau mai rā. E kore ware ware ngā tikanga akoroma a kuima, me mehi ki ngā mate kātika, O rei rei ngā mate o te wiki o te marama o te tau, me ngā mate huhua ke wainga nui a tātou. Haere ki te pō nui, te pō roa, te pō oti atu. Haere ki te kainga tūturo ngai tātou te iwi Māori, ki Hawaiki nui, Hawaiki roa, Hawaiki pōma o mao, te hono i wairua ki te whai iao ki te ao marama. Rātou, te hunga mate ki a rātou, tātou ngā urupā, rātou mā, ati hei Māori ari ki a tātou. Hei te haere tonu tēnei mihi ki a koutou, Kia koutou i whai wāhi mai i tēnei pō, ki te whakarongo ki ngā kōrero, te whiriwhiri ki ngā ahuatanga kei mua i te aroharo, hei painga mō tō ake mahi toi. Nō reira, kare arika i kā kui mihi kia koutou, nō reira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Tēnā tātou, for those of you who have just joined us, my name is Kiri Amateu, I'm the Arts Practice Director for Ngātoi Māori. Welcome to tonight's session for the BBC Fund. I'm going to hand over to Tiltinga, who's going to be hosting you tonight. However, feel free to keep sharing in the chat function there. Ko ai koe, no hea koe. As a form of whanaunga tanga, I guess, so we know who you guys are, and also so that some of the other participants um, uh, might get an idea who you are. You don't have to, of course. Kei au koutou te tikanga. He oi, kei te pahu pahu noi hoa, ke reo mai tēnei wā. Ka hoa te te rākau, kia koe e te o tinga. Māu e whaka kupu kupu whaka wahai ngā kōrero mō te pōne. Tēnā koe e wā. Kia ora rā te pūhua. Mihi nui kia koutou e tai mana i pōne. E te hakarongo ki o mātou kōrero hata hirehira e Pano of the Capability Presentation. Nō te tai toke rau ahau, he kua hau te kaihaka mahere Māori mō toi au te atoa. My name is Te Otunga Hohaia. I'm the Planning Services Advisor in Māori for toi au te atoa. And it's so good to have you all here with us. And I'm glad that I know that know that some of you have just finished work and you might be a little bit hea moi, you might be a little bit māngere, but because you've had your cup of tea and we're going to give you an injection of uh, Oranga Tanga here tonight, I know that uh, tonight's quarter door is going to be really, really, really good for uh, you, our creators uh, out here in uh, Aotearoa. So for those of you, this is the first time that you have um, been to this presentation earlier this year, we held the first of the capability. Um, and at that time, then we had a cap of 100 people. Um, but this time, um, because of the uh, popularity of capability, uh, building business capability, there's no cap with this round. Um, and I just want to explain as well that for those of you who actually uh, uh, applied in the first round. Uh, this second round has been open to those who A, were not successful in the first round of capability or those who didn't apply the first time. Um, so I'm not going to say unfortunately, I'm just going to say congratulations to those of you who were approved in the first capability round and thank you for making way for those who weren't successful and who have come here the first time tonight. You like where I put that? I like that. <laughs> so um, tonight uh, I'm joined with several of my colleagues. So in the background, you know, we're sort of mysterious. They're hovering there, and uh, and through the course of the evening, I'm going to be doing some magic words and things that are just going to magically appear and will disappear in some cases. Um, 
So we'll be, uh, they'll be helping me answer some of your questions. And if you have a partner, I just pop it into the chat there. And one of my one of my magical people in the background will be able to answer those for you. Um, if we don't have the answer for you right now, uh, we'll let you know and we'll get we'll take your details a little bit later on through the course of the presentation and we'll get back to you at a later time. So now that so, we're all strapped in and so we're ready that, to go. Oh, Aroha Mai. So that is that the QA function, Ehua? That's a oh, it is the QA one. function. Can you see the QA function at the bottom of your screen? I see uh, Kapai. So you're just, just going to put your part tie in there. Yeah. Are we ready to go? Aye. Rawi. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Just so that we uh, are all on the same page. Just one moment. It's all that magical stuff that's going to happen for us. Can you see that? Oh, let's try that again. Just talk amongst yourself. Can you see? Uh, I'm going to stop here. We need no more. Hi there, my Tamaki Makaura. Tēnā koe, Rob Shustarika, ka tahi te ingoa ko tērā. Ooh, jingus. And of course, your toi for Kairo. Tēnā koe, nau mai, haere mai. Tēnā koe, Louis. Kia ora rā. Kāpai, thank you, Kiriama. So as you can see on the right here, this is the screen that we're going to be looking at, and it's building business capability for individual practitioners fund. So what we'll cover today is that this presentation is directed to the individual art practitioners and creatives to encourage you to build your own business capability, fund and answer any questions. Now, some of you may want to think that you can slide in a project here. No, so it's a bit like being in the Fadi Kai, uh, at the Marae, sorry, is that everything, everything is happening good at the back, everything in the front is going to be so in this case, the project is what's in front, but everything at the back is a business capability, and that's what we're concentrating on with this fund. So today's session won't be recorded, but we'll be updating our FAQs for this fund after these sessions to capture the key questions and answers. Um, if you have, <clears throat> if you can pop it into the chat box, of the, uh, uh, into the FAQ at the bottom of the screen, um, or raise your hand, and we'll do our best to answer these as we go through. Now, we may not have all the answers, and if we don't, we'll come back to you, like I said before, with more information as the session progresses. So what we'll cover today is the fund's purpose, eligibility, the kinds of activities we will fund, and what we won't fund, okay. what to include in your application, assessment criteria, checklist, key dates and contacts, and any part time. Hopefully I won't talk too long. So the fund's purpose. This fund offers grants to support individual artists and arts practitioners to develop skills that increase your career, sustainability, and future-proof your business practice. Individual artists and arts practitioners can apply to activities that help them remain relevant to audiences and communities and become more resilient to changing environments. So some of you asked last time, I belong to a group. Can the group apply? No. You as individuals can apply out of that group, but the group as a whole cannot. So you can't apply as a collective, but you can apply as an individual. Eligibility criteria. Choosing a funding form. So the eligibility criteria is that who is eligible to apply? Well, first and foremost, like I said before, the individual artists or practitioners can apply if you have a track record of success. Now that includes individuals at any stage of their career, be you emerging, be you mid-career, or you're an established career, um, you can, any one of you can apply. Now the project must start after the 25th of November 2022 and be completed by the 25th of November 2023. You can choose to apply via one of the three pools, which is general, Pacific, or Maori. With the Maori pool, with the Maori pool, you have to be you have the Paka Papa to Maori ancestry. Uh, but with Pacific and general pool. Um, if you can show that you have um, Pacific uh, 
uh, ancestry or you have a specific focus um, business, um, you'll apply through that. Or if you're general and you don't belong to either Māori or Pacific, you can apply through general. What the fund covers. So between you can apply between five thousand and ten thousand dollars towards one or combination of the following. Like for example, if you're looking for training as a producer, you may want to be mentored by a producer uh, in the sector who has more experience than you and can help build your skills. You, you know, like your niche, who's in it who has a particular skill that you could use. Um, you could have a network of people who um, you've come in contact with, or, or you may have a network. So you can do your either research and planning. So in your business, in your business, not your past practice, but in your business, you may need to research something that will help develop your business. So developing or revising business or risk management strategies, researching new audiences and income streams. Or you could be looking at inclusion, like building cultural competence or training to recognize and address unconscious bias, um, disability responsiveness training. So um, that might be part of your business that you need to look at. The other one is manu or raw, resilience, um, stress management training, well-being and ho order. Um, health coaching um, that you think would be best suited for your business development. Or it could be professional development. Professional development could be financial training course so that you don't have to keep hiring all those um, all those uh, accountants to do your books. You'll know what you're reading while you're looking at it, how to be zero, how to type a letter, um, attendance or marketing, how to market yourself, go to workshops or industry conferences. You might want to do do that as part of your business development. Another one is digital skills. Um, you can do your um, digital strategy development um, using e-commerce, website, or online context development, content development. Or finally, you could use digital tools. Now, the digital tools, this is a wonderful, wonderful funding program because this is the only one where you can actually use $3,000 from out of the, out of the fund towards your digital tools. So if you need to use a computer, as you need to update your computer as part of your business, not because you want to run Netflix, but as part of your business, then look at, you can look up to $3,000. If you need the camera as part of your business, you know, you, you can do that. The thing about that is that you need to qualify what you're asking for. So if you're going to be buying capital expenditure, capital expenses you need to be able to qualify why you need that for your business and how it's going to help your business as is any of what these uh, funds are going to be covering you need to qualify each and every one of them just bear with me i've uh, pushed the wrong button i'm good like that Now, what the fund doesn't cover is that your artistic practice, in your artistic practice, the fund does not cover support costs uh, related to the building artistic capability. So we won't cover a project. Project costs for your artistic practice, like the fund does not support the development or presentation costs relating to an artistic project or budgets less than $5,000. Kia ora got... This is uh, James. I'm just one of the tech support for CNZ. Um, you're currently sharing the first slide of your screen, but if you just want yes. to jump across. Awesome. I thought I was just going to leave it there and just, and just talk to it. Oh, sweet. Sorry about that. Awesome. <laughs> it's all, all right. right. Away so, so your budget is less than $5,000. Um, then you won't get funded. So have a look about how what other things that you can actually use um, the ten thousand dollars for. You can apply up to ten thousand dollars. Have a look about what you know what else you think that you might need as part of your business. You may have more than one co copper that you want to apply for. You may want to um, go and do some study somewhere, um, which this 
funding permits you to do it to actually go and do some study at a tertiary program that will help build your business capability. Um, organizations, this fund is for individual artists and arts practitioners, and you may apply as an individual, not an organization, like I said before. However, we recognize the fund may benefit your organization or company, for example, for sole traders or company owners. So apply as an individual. Costs incurred before the 25th of November. This is what we call ret retrospective work. That is anything that has started before the 25th of November will not be funded. So make sure that everything starts on the 25th of November or after. Only CAPEX costs, you can apply for up to $3,000 worth of capital expenditure, um, though these are to support your overall project. Now, the other thing about um, what we won't what we won't support is that if you're going for let's say for example that you you need to um, take out an annual application for a new computer such as zero and they only do it for an, uh, for um a four year when you do your dates it's going to ask you when is your um, project going to start and when it's going to finish you need to make sure if you're going to be taking out something that's going to be for a year, that your project goes for a year as well. If you have it for less than that, you won't, that will be taken out of your budget. So make sure that if you've got an application or anything like that for your business, building business capability that's going to go for a year, then you make sure that you put your start date and your end date for a year. <clears throat> What's to include in your application? Now, we'll be asking you for four key questions. Four key questions. What, the what, what is the support you need and why? How it will benefit your career long-term. So you can't just go, well, I think I'll just put this person's name down because I quite like, like the sound of it. Think about what you actually do need. And through your arts practice, you've actually would have identified who you'd actually like to mentor you or who you'd like to have a wānanga with. Remember, a wānanga can be two people. We're having a wānanga now. So you can decide who you want to have. It's all about you. How, where, when, and how you plan to deliver your capability, skills, development project. So you need to decide where you're going to do that. Do you need to go to or to do it? Do you need to go to another place? Um, do you, will you do it on? Uh, through um, through Zoom, you know, you need to decide how you're actually going to have that delivered. Is it going to be artinana, um, face-to-face? Um, make sure, see what works for you and works for your project. Who? Tell us about yourself and the other key people, organizations in the project. So when you've decided, say for example, that you want to um, develop or learn how to do your website, you will use your own network amongst you. You've got enough people around you, I'm sure that you know, even if they're not arts practitioners, um, but you may find people that, uh, someone that you can talk to that says, hey, look, I've seen uh, your website, or even if you jump onto the website, websites that you like, and get in touch with those people and ask them, who did they get or how did they do that? Um, you know, and just you just do a bit of research that you think would best suit your needs um, for your project. And then we want to know, who are they? What is their cooking and what skill set do they have? Um, and uh, what are they going to be doing for you and for your business? And the best one, after you got all of this sorted out, is how much? How much are you seeking? You need to also want to include in your application. We're asking for your artistic CV. So try and um, give us what, don't try and throw in everything because you think, well, I'm going to really just sort of make a top heavy. Put in the things that are related to your project and your art practice. Put in the things that you think will actually show what you need as part of your business capability from your CV so that you can say, well, I'm skilled in this, but I can see that um, my weak link is here and this is where I want to develop that strength in my business. Your CV bios or any contractors or providers and confirmation of their availability. So we want a letter or a confirmation from services or from the people who are going to be writing you 
be providing you with the service that one, uh, how much they cost, their profile, and um, are they available to do the mahi that you ask them for and for the dates that you want to actually hire them for, because you're going to be paying them. We want to know, um, have a quote or their fees, preferably on their letterhead or, or even that they'll just send you a letter or they can send you an invoice. We would like to have a timeline. So a timeline of your project from when it's going to start to when it's going to finish. Um, putting it into a table is really good. So you might want to, for example, consider putting it into a four table, four column table where you can have the date, uh, the, the, the co-papa, um, and then what's going to happen in that co-papa. And then the last column could be around um, the status of where it's at at the time. So as you're completing stuff, um, you can just put it down as check and complete it. So the timeline is really good for yourself as a checklist as well. Um, but it's also good for us to see um, what huarahi that you actually have chosen as far as getting to your goal or the end or the end game, should we say, for your uh, building business capability. Oh, you got to go back. Sorry, I just got to go back a bit. I've gone really too far. So what you need to look at is... Um, in the budget, <laughs> I've just got a bit too far. Sorry, sorry, everybody. I should have taken this for test drive a lot further than um than just around Otara. All right, evening. Let's okay. quickly go through. Nothing wrong with Otara. Nothing wrong with Otara. I know, you know, it's got the best, you know, it's got the best um, flea market in the whole wide world. 100%. <laughs> so, with your budget, um, on our website, you will see in the budget theme, in, in the budget tab, and especially in funding guidelines, there's a budget template there that you can use. Use it. Don't try and, and think, well, I'm going to sit here and do one up myself, you know. Be smarter, work smart, use the template, it's there for you to use. All you have to do is insert all the information, the costing. Um, if you're getting people to come in as part of your stakeholders or contributors to your project or to your um, development, um, make sure you have their name there and what they're going to be and what their business is and how much they're going to cost. If they've got an invoice, provide that as well. Use that one to do your, your budget. COVID-19 contingency plan. You, um, there, there is a table on our website that you can use. And basically what that is, is that we're asking you to do some due diligence, to check what could actually stop my project, my, my own development from happening. So if your mahi is talking to Komato, for example, because you want to gather more mātauranga around, um, around your iwi, whānau hapu iwi, um, and you have identified that you need to go and spend time with two komatua, what things do you think will actually stop that from happening or interfere your uh, project from advancing? Well, straight off the bat, COVID's, around. COVID's still here, hasn't disappeared, so our komatua could be sick, your program could be stopped for a little while, so that is the risk. What is your mitigation around that? Will you wait? Will you speak to that co-master and perhaps zoom in on them rather than doing our tinana? These are the types of things that we want you to put into your COVID contingency plan about, but if this happens, then I'll do this. But if the risk, then I'll do the mitigation. That's what we want to see in your COVID contingency plan. And optional, this is a great one. This funding permits you, encourages you, not permits you, encourages you to actually present or take a five minute video of you speaking about your project, about what you want to do. You know, we get to hear your excitement. We get to see what you want to talk about as far as your, um, your project is concerned. And I know some of you don't like to be seen on the camera. So no, you cannot go into witness protection, but this is a really, really good time where you don't have to write it. You can just say it. You would still have to be, you still have to submit the budget. You'd still have to submit the invoicing. You'd still have to submit um, all the CVs and everything else. 
but to be able without having to write about what the project is you could say it consider that Certainly. we only want five minutes then so after all of that are you still keen to apply Kildare, are we able to unshare the screen for a sec? Sure. There you go. Kapai, uh, um, we've we've got a team of uh, of experts here uh, from Creative New Zealand in the background, ready to answer any of your questions. Um, and, and sorry to interrupt, Ehua, uh, I'll let you carry on there. Hey, However, I'm if you do um, have anything, uh, just top of mind. Um, you know, again, no, no questions or dumb question. And if, even if you feel like you want to ask a question on behalf of the, the Ropu, uh, Tukua might cut off you on my and uh, our, our team will get to you as, as soon as we can. Tēnā Joy. Kia ora, Joy. Kia ora, Joy. Thank you, Kiriana. So we have an assessment criteria. So in the assessment criteria, um, we want to know the timeline. So why is this support needed and now? We want to know what the impact is. Will your project achieve the desired goal or goals and have long-term benefits um, for your sustainability? Planning. Is your plan and timeline realistic? You know, is it going to take you a year or is it only going to take you a little while and could you perhaps need some other um, development that you might need for your business. Uh, your budget, is your budget thorough and accurate? So try not to do guesstimates, actually go and source out how much it's going to cost so that you know how much money that you're playing around with, um, especially if you're actually going to be using part of that budget for your um, uh, capital expenditure. Those, we really want to have those invoices or those quotes uh, for those. Uh, and people, do the people involved have the skills and experience to deliver your project? So, you know, don't just choose someone because you saw them from a distance and you thought, gosh, I think I want to do that. I think they're really good. And then you find that they actually can't teach you. Do some research. You know, because this is about your capability, it's about what you want. This is all about you. All about you. So have a look around and make sure you do you. So still keen to apply, um, you know, we ask that you think like the assessor um, and consider uh, what you will need to tell us and help us to assess your project. One thing, you don't have to be an academic to write it. You know, just write it like you're telling somebody the project. Imagine that someone's walked up to you and say, hey, bro, what are you doing now? Oh, you know, I've got this... Um, uh, a business idea that I want to do and I want to do blah, 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 blah. Write it like you're telling someone. Um, and, you know, you don't have, don't have to have the big words. Uh, you don't have to dumb it down um, because the assessors who are going to be reading your project are all matanga. They're all exponents in the field that you are looking at. So just write it like you're talking to somebody and, and, and write it like as if you're talking to the assessor what you want them to know. Keep it succinct, keep it concise, keep it on the kopapa. Don't go wee wee wah wah. Sometimes we do because we get a bit visceral, a bit emotional about our projects, mm -hmm. uh, but make sure that it's all about the business. And secondly, read the guidelines in our FAQs. You know, don't forget to look at our funding guidelines and our FAQs that will soon be on our website. Um, and they're really on our website too. And these will be updated as we go along. Yes. Um, in regards to uh, invoices and, and and being able to collect that that material, would it would it suffice if I sourced that stuff on the internet and then, then took a screenshot of 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 um, invoices or? Oh, most you know? definitely. You know, again, let your fingers do the walking rather than you, um, and it's a lot easier. I mean, I've done that myself when I've been having to source. You know, because you, it comes out as a PDF, it can't be altered. Yeah, of course, jump onto the internet, have a look for where you can actually source everything that you want. You know, and a lot of them have got the backgrounds as well. Do a screenshot, you know how to do that. You know, you go down to the uh, to the magnifying glass, type in SNP, SNP will come up, should come up. Um, and then you just take a snip of what you want and put it into a Word document. And yeah. as it's go along. Yeah. And, and Aroha Mai, it's an exciting fund. Um, and 
is it possible within this fund to have a mentor to oh, hire, yeah. hire a, a business mentor to help with my practice and mm -hmm. what would I need um, a, a letter of support or would that mean um, a, 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 a treaty document what what does um, Creative New Zealand need to see to make sure that that's uh, that, that relationship has and that conversation has been had well yeah if your treaty is going to get your land back of course by all means do the treaty document but You'd want to have a little confirmation from the person who's going to be providing you with that mentorship, um, you know. And you'd want to have, we'd want to have uh, their bio as well about what they've done and 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 uh, in the past and how they can actually help your business capability. So getting it a, a formalized letter from them uh, about what they're going to do with you and how they're going to do that and what they've done um, would strengthen your application um, and have that come in as an attachment with your application as well. Awesome. And so just really quick um, recap. So the first question is basically the what. What, what, what is it and why do you want to do it? Why is it important for your, um, for your business capability or that part of uh, your, your practice? So you've got your, your arts practice side and then there's the business development side. And they're two different exactly. uh, um, mahi, right? Exactly. Um, mm. Exactly. So just remember that, you know, your your arts practice side, like I said, like if you liken it to the Badai, the arts practice side, uh, or the Kai uh, Korero, the, the Kai Karaga, that they were doing all the work at the front, that's your art practice. But at the back, or the Ringa Wera that's in the kitchen, doing all the hard money here at the back, getting everything going, that's your business side. That's the side that you want to develop, is everything that's in the kitchen to support you for your arts practice in front. Tika. Okay, kapo marama, marama, and then what? Um, how? So we're looking at maybe like a timeline, maybe broken up into weeks, maybe. Um, yeah. To make it nice and clear, I'm meeting with this person, engaging with this service, um, I'm, I'm acquiring this tool to my repertoire as well, and just just basically keeping it nice and simple for people to understand. It's Most a no definitely. big language, no AP no. referencing. Uh, but just nice and clear, yeah? Most definitely. And, oh. and I recommend that you actually use a table um, if you can um, because, you, you know, you don't have to write too much. You just have to say, just stay doing this. This is what it is. Done. Do the same thing. Going to do this. Just stay. This is what it is. Finish. Um, and it just keeps you keeps you focused on what your mahi is going to be as well. Um, so that, and you can use that as a checklist uh, for as you're gathering all your documentation to support uh, your application. Uh, it's good to see that all that stuff is in there that you want to do for your uh, business, building business capability. Good question. I wonder if I'm able to ask Helen a question. Is that possible? Uh, might, might, might not be able to bring her on screen I'm not sure but I did wonder I mean you might be able to answer this here well what what are the types of projects that were successful in the last round um, just to give us an idea um, of what types of projects uh, uh, um, yeah uh, sort of fall into the ballpark of of the capability fund because a little bit different to the practice side I get Oh, you know what? I think Helen is the best person to answer this one. I, I, I recall that there were um, uh, um, oh, oh. strategies. Oh, tēnā koe, Helen. Tēnā koe. <laughs> and uh, tēnā koe, um, it's a curveball coming at you live. Uh, oh, it's uh, kia, ora, kia ora koutou. Mm. Um, it's lovely to be here with you all. I'll just pop in and, and talk about the last round and what, what we had in terms of successful applications, if that would be useful. Um, and then I'll and then I'll duck out again uh, behind the scenes. So um, so in the last round, the strongest strongest applications tended to include a clear sense of the applicant's own capability needs as an individual. Mm -hmm. um, a compelling need for why the skills development was needed now. And I think we've talked quite a bit about that already. So it's it's the need. Why yeah. is it needed now? So Detailed identify the gap and then say how, and then, then talk about how this is important to your uh, business capability. Aye, aye, exactly. Mm. Um, and then also...
detailed information about the people involved in the people section and then concise support material. So we've talked again about this, but the clear quotes and the clarity of work to be carried out by contractors and then a detailed description of the proposed project and its goals and a strong project plan and how it would be carried out, clear and achievable timeframes and letters of support that were recent, relevant and specific rather than generic letters. Um, and finally, and Teo Ting has mentioned this, but accurate budgets. So for instance, if you were applying for a subscription for zero um, and you applied for 12 months, but your project was only for four months, then the subscription for zero would only be covered for four months. So it's some accurate budgets that we're looking for if possible, and we're happy to help you with those. And, and we've got our templates um, for those as well. But um, there were so many different areas, particularly last time around digital capability. Um, it's obviously a really huge part of a successful business and the way we do our mahi. So um, there were lots of uh, a very strong focus on digital skills capability and even thinking about e-commerce, uh, live streaming and social media training or even website development um, was, a, was a component of digital last time. Mm -hmm. um, and combined with that were uh, quite a few applications that had digital equipment and tools um, showing obviously that high demand for technology uh, to practically support the implementation of a project. Um, and then finally, before I leave, just a reflection that Future Pathways and Hawara via mentoring and Tuakana Tena partnerships uh, were also a feature of the last round, um, which I think, as I think you've talked to Kiriyama, the mentoring is really, I think, important for our artists and practitioners, finding someone that's a really good fit for you and your art form um, and where you want to be going in the future, uh, as well as perhaps some of the more practical sides, such as financial skills training or helping you to market uh, what you do to the world. So that's hopefully just a little bit of a snapshot, if that was useful. Very, very clear. So the, there's four pages, four sections of the application, the what, what it is you want to do and why you want to do it. Think about yourself as a practitioner and what gaps you may have. We all have gaps in that area. And then identify those places or the services, um, resources that you um, might be able to plug those gaps or strengthen that part of your capability. So that's the, the what section. The how give us a really clear timeline of how, how you're going to be working uh, through this project um, and with different people the who the who section makes making sure it's nice and detailed so it's not just uh the follow kitty of my chair bro do it chair, mm -hmm. chair silly example i know but um but uh, a little bit more than than just the uh, name and 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 iwi a little bit about their who they are and what they do as well mm -hmm. and um good resources good good support material. COVID plan, and you mentioned that earlier, Tilting, is that right? That that's um, part of eligibility as well? Do they need that as part of this? Oh. I think uh, you're on mute, Tilting. That's that's a dollar in the, um, the <laughs> it is a dollar. lollies. <laughs> Everybody has to have a backup plan with your COVID. So that's what your COVID contingency plan is. So have a look, like I mentioned before, check to see what could actually get, perhaps hinder the progress of your uh, of your co-papa and, and make sure that you've got an alternative plan in case that happens. So just think of, if this happens, then I'll do. If this, the risk, then I'll mitigation. But everybody's got to have one. Uh, on our website too, we've got we do have a table there that you can use for your um, for your COVID contingency plan. And you just have to slot in what the co-papa is and what you think the risk is going to be and how you think you're going to overcome that. We all know uh, about the um, uh, the Ministry of Health uh, safety procedures. What we want to know is have you looked at your project to make sure that there's nothing that's going to stop your development, your business development. Um, don't forget to have a look in the chat as well. There's some really, really interesting stuff that's in there. Um, you know, the key dates um, and, um, and also the further information. You can send, you can contact capability. Uh, and there's the link again 
um, that our magic genie has put in there about business capability and individual practitioners fund on the website. Um, so you can grab all that information as well. Um, I think we have come to the end of our presentation. Uh, we want to hand some time over to you, if, um, to you, our practitioners, if you have any questions about anything that's occurred, um, anything that you want to query again, um, it's um, we're here and we've got um, some lovely little some lovely little um, helpers behind us who can answer, help us answer any questions that we may not be uh, that we may struggle over. So we're going to open the floor up to you. Really, really quick, quickly, Ehua. Uh, when does the fund open? Uh, when does it close? And when's the notification of that? Um, and and Ehua Ma, if you're listening at home. Um, pay attention to the opening day. I would really, I, I know there's not a cap, but um, re really start to, to collect your information now and almost treat that as your closing date. Um, yeah, procrastination is uh, the mother of all. Mm -hmm. Kilda. Um, yeah, so we open on the 19th of September, which is uh, only a few weeks away now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we close on the 25th of October. And notification. No, no, we don't. Apologies. That's the 14th of October. So there's a week less, 1 p.m. on the 14th of October. So it's open for pretty much four weeks. But yeah, it's great to be able to start getting material ready now for the 19th when it opens. And a really important um, uh, thing that I heard uh, Tiltinger say is that your project must start after the notification date, which is the notification 20, 25th of November. 25th. So your project has to start from that time onwards. Make sure that you put that in. Um, if you're saying, oh, I'm going to start now, um, unfortunately, we might have to go back to the budget and, and take everything out up until the point that notification starts, or it may become completely ineligible um, to start with. So just make sure that you've got that on point. Um, how's our questions going in, in the chat and in the uh, Q&A? We've got one here from uh, Tyler, Tyler here, Biparaha. If we get funding from other sources, does that invalidate our ability to apply for this funding? I see that uh, I see that our little gnome is typing in the background. <laughs> Kapa, and we have to be really sort of specific about what type of funding that is. If you're getting um, capability building support for the same kaupapa, for your artistry, for your for, for yourself as a practitioner from another source, um, you'd probably best to declare that. Um, and 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 that may that may be ineligible, uh, Helen. I'm not sure or Richard. Um, yeah, so it, it depends. Uh, I, I think certainly you have to show other sources of, of revenue and income that, that would be put towards the project. So, um, for instance, if you're coming in for $10,000, but the project's going to cost $20,000, then we need to know where the other money's coming from. Um, but it, it wouldn't necessarily rule it out if it wasn't a duplication of funding. So if it was just enabling you to focus on a different area of your business startup this project for instance so as long as there wasn't an overlap and a duplication it still could be eligible um to your point i think i would say copy so go back to, to using uh, tilting as um, morai analogy uh those who are performing uh, the, the functions at the front of the morai that would be considered say the artistic the, the artistic practice if i called mm. it or karana mm. And then on the the back side of that would be all the project management, um, the administration, all of that stuff that not a, not a lot of us see, but the most important stuff um, uh, in terms of getting uh, things started, uh, making sure that everything is taken care of. And now that that back uh, that uh, stuff that happens in the background, that that's the capability fund. Now. If you were to apply for a fund for somewhere else that, that funds the, the practice of your mahi, um, that's fine. You can still apply for the business capability as well. That's um, oh, two, mm -hmm. considered two different uh, wahanga, two different yeah, areas. Yeah, so as long as you weren't coming in for project costs. So if you were putting on for, for, for a performance or an exhibition or something that you're putting on, um, this wouldn't uh, cover, say, the marketing costs for that. 
or the community outreach or the education component to it or even the administration or project management of any of that um you know kind of putting on a performance for instance it wouldn't cover that this is about building long-term career sustainability and building the business skills that you can use longer mm. term to mm. build build your resilience as an artist or practitioner quick quick another quick question geez i've got lots tonight um <laughs> with the blockchain and nft um uh, popping up and becoming a viable option for artists mm. to be looking at sustainability of the arts practice mm. um is that an area that this fund can support as well it could certainly support the strategic kind of exploration of nfts so for instance if you wanted to explore that as as a new uh business uh revenue uh area for your for your practice so for instance it might be that actually i could earn more money through nfts and you wanted to employ someone to develop a strategy or explore that for you um, then that's definitely possible because it's about kind of expanding your business potential as an artist. Um, but it wouldn't be about, you know, creating a project for you to, to, to showcase your art as, as, in, in, as an NFT. And I don't understand enough about it, but, you know, just as a kind of one off, if you like. Another question. <laughs> if I was a, a, a Tamoko artist, a Fokairo practitioner, and I was looking at expanding my presence to, to the online um, uh, format, would this fund support me to um, create a website and create the, uh, the ability to be able to sell my works and my services online? Yeah, so again, to it's really around digital strategy again. So, you know, thinking about um, how you utilize your website as a tool um, to promote who you are and what you do and your art. Absolutely. Um, uh, this fund would be, you know, definitely something you could consider in terms of website development and working with a third party provider, as long as you can show us the results that you expect um, to build in terms of long-term sustainability. I saw um, uh, Matua Papa James is, uh, Blaine's actually has, has put into the chat. What is mm. NFT? Um, so we might be able to, to find a link and send that um, somebody from the team might be able to find a link on NFT. Um, basically they're non-funded tokens and they're sort of a digital asset um, so, so a little bit like Bitcoin, they've sort of gone crazy uh, online. Um, but we, it's a space where artists can create images or take photos of images, and and sell sell the uh, these these images um, online, uh, and people have the op have uh, uh, the option of buying the original copy uh, of these of these artworks. Um, now with the digital age, of, of course, I got my Tupuna in the background, Moody White, who was painted by Mr. G. Um, now, Mr. G is already, he, he's in the NFT space. And um, in one day of selling his NFTs, he made $100,000 um, selling uh, photos and pictures, exactly like what you see in the background. Yeah, so it's another way that you are able to make an income um, from your from your toy Māori, from your images. Um, and and I and I'd recommend having a look into it. It's still quite new. There's still some risks involved in that area, um, uh, but but um, it, it can be quite um, uh, lucrative and, and and sustainable for your practice as well. Mm. Um, it stands for non-fundable token. Yeah, you, that's right. You, you mentioned that, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Te Rafiti Roa. I'm sure uh, most people in, in tell Māori, toi Māori no te mm -hmm. He's done a series of um, workshops and webinars. If you have a look on his Facebook page, mm -hmm. um, you, you'll, you'll get a good good idea. Yeah. Right yeah. Okay. Kei te pau te wā, uh, we got a few more questions. Digital contracts, yes. Uh, uh, mm -mm. Kapai, te akua nei kua ea, uh, mm. we may have come to the end 
of our session tonight. Unless you have any burning questions that you want to ask, or uh, you, you prefer to talk to one of us in person, um, Tina, uh, get, get in contact with us um, at creativenz.govt.nz. Um, te o tinga, um, would, would you be the um, person that people could? Ngātou Māori, yeah, or the participants, they can actually send, you can actually send a, a query to capability, um, which is uh, capability at uh, creativenz, creativenz.govt.nz, capability at creativenz.govt.nz in the first instance. Mm -hmm. Kapai. Um, well, tell who I need to hear on a quarter or more than a poor. I know they are a Kahuri Tene Mahikau Koto, uh, Koto with time, uh, my Tene Po, um, I can't wait to me Hikau Koto, uh, Taku, uh, Tino Korero Koto, Kawe Fakama, Kawe Fakama, Mahia Te Mahi, Kaikone Te Tahi Puna Pute, Hai Totoko Yakota. Uh, no reira, uh, mai a mātou o toi ao te aroa, māua ko te otinga, uh, mātou ko Helen i tēnei pō, mm. uh, pō Marie, uh, kia pai te pō, uh, kua nei ka kite tātou i a tātou. No reira, me whakakapi tēnei wahanga uh, ki te karakia. No reira, mino i tātou. A kia taura ko ngā mana ki tanga te mea ngaro ki runga i hoki tēnā ki tēnō tātou. Kia mā hea ke rā te hua mā kihi kihi, kia toi te kupu, toi te reo, toi te mana, kia toi ko ngā toi Māori. Tuturu āwhiti whakamaua, kia tīna, tīna, haumie, huie, tāi, kie. Tēnā tātou. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you guys in the email. Nā mihi nui ki a koutou.